Hey, what's up guys? The AMD coverage continues and today we are looking at the new RX 5700 XT. This is AMD's top tier GPU for the Navi lineup, but it is still priced below and does perform below the Radeon 7. Now, seeing as I do not have the new RTX Super GPUs, that's the 2060 and 2070 Super, I think we'd all agree that it's kind of pointless for me to do a full blown benchmark video with the RX 5700 XT, seeing as that's going to be pretty redundant by the time it gets online. So instead we're checking out the 5700 XT in terms of overclocking and undervolting. That is, we want to see you know what we can get out of this card in terms of performance for clock speed and thermals. It is using a blower style card, so it will be interesting to see how that goes. And seeing as the 5700 series are available to buy right now, there's no doubt that a lot of you would like to know how to tune it and get the most performance out of it. As we'll see, there are still some bugs in the software, but this isn't pre-release software. This is public software. And like I said, this is available to buy, so why not see the current state of the software and see what we can do with it. So if you are interested in seeing the gaming performance of the RX 5700 XT versus the RTX 2070 and 2060 Super, I will leave some links down below to some very solid reviews. As I mentioned, I only have the vanilla 2070 to compare here, and that comparison was made pretty much pointless about a week ago. In summary, since AMD have lowered the price of the RX 5700 XT to 399 US, it is actually a decent contender among those competing RTX Super cards. One thing that's interesting though is that AMD have decided to stick with a blower cooler, whereas Nvidia have moved on to a more efficient dual fan cooler and seem to be sticking with that. Blower coolers are notorious for running hot, loud, and generally holding back overclocking performance. As we'll see, that is much of the same here with the 5700 XT. Credit is due though for making one seriously good looking cooler though, really tasteful black and red design in my opinion, and I personally don't mind the visible kink in the shroud for a bit of uniqueness. All of the heat exhaust is coming out of the rear of the card next to the eye as is normal with blower style coolers, but the heatsink is also exposed on the other end and that seems to be used for intake. Oddly enough, we saw this with the Nvidia 10 series Founders Edition cards as well to a smaller degree. You won't find this also on the RX 5700 that is completely blocked. Still though, this is a blower style cooler and if you were considering this card, you might want to wait for an aftermarket model like the Gaming X or Strix if and when they do arrive. Now the 5700 XT uses an 8 plus 6 pin power connector, which does seem a bit overkill for what the board actually consumes. In terms of power consumption out of the box, it lands pretty much spot on with the Founders Edition RTX 2070. That also puts it slightly under the stock Vega 56, which is pretty impressive considering the significant difference in gaming performance between them. As we know, Navi is on the new 7 nanometer architecture, so AMD have made a ton of progress in terms of power efficiency versus the Vega GPUs. So to tune the RX 5700 XT, I'm using AMD Radeon Wattman, which can be found in the latest Adrenaline software, which is version 19.7.1. This is a public release that all of you have access to. This isn't a pre-release driver or anything like that. And overall, it does seem to work decent enough to the point where you can tune the card to your likings, but it does have a few bugs and I found it to be pretty laggy. So I won't bore you with my trial and error. Let's just cut right to the results. So starting with the clock speed for the RX 5700 XT, it settles right around 1900 megahertz out of the box. And don't worry, we will zoom into the chart as well as look at the exact frequency averages in bar charts in just a second. In this graph, we should be looking at the stability of each plot. And in this case for the 5700 XT at stock, it does jump around quite a bit. Also note that the extreme dips down to zero megahertz or 1000 megahertz even is one of the bugs that the current driver software has. You'll see the same thing in pretty much every graph today, so just ignore those extreme dips. By raising the power limit to max on the 5700 XT, we can relieve it of the majority of its clock frequency instability, and we do get a boost right up to around 2000 megahertz. Next up is overclocking, and in summary, I was able to run the card with a target frequency of 2110 megahertz and raise the memory to 920 megahertz. The keyword is target here, as no matter what you set for the GPU clock frequency, Radeon GPUs consider that to be the upper limit of their frequency and voltage curve. 
So we do get a bit of a boost here. This is reflected in gaming as well, but it is pretty sporadic. I was able to undervolt the 5700 XT by setting a target voltage of 1095 millivolts. And when compared to stock, this gives us the stability of what we get from raising the power limit, but with lower thermals. For those unfamiliar with undervolting, all it is is leaving the GPU clock speed the same and lowering the voltage as far as you can while the card remains stable. There's no performance loss, just a reduction in thermals and noise. Here we can see that by reducing the operating voltage of the GPU and removing the power limit though, the GPU is able to boost a bit higher, giving us a higher boost clock even compared to what we get from raising the power limit. Now I said that undervolting generally improves noise levels as well, but in this case, no matter what adjustment I made to the 5700 XT, the noise level stayed identical throughout. This was due to the fan speed being locked to 2100 RPM the entire time. Usually you'd see the fan speed react to GPU or junction temperature, but here that just isn't the case. So if you want to make your 5700 XT run quieter or perhaps louder for some reason, you'll need to do that manually by adjusting the fan curve. Now looking at the thermal results, out of the box the 5700 XT lands us right around 77 degrees C, but that's on an open test bench with a room ambient of just 18 degrees C. It is winter here in Australia currently. So if your climate is warmer, say 25 to 30 degrees C, I'd seriously consider some aftermarket cooling options. Overclocking the 5700 XT does push the GPU up to 83 degrees C, but thankfully undervolting is effective in running things a bit cooler. Now, although this might only seem like a two degree reduction from stock, remember that the GPU is also running about 30 megahertz higher as well. I will admit though, these aren't the biggest gains that I've seen from undervolting a GPU, but it is slightly better than running the card at stock, really is up to you whether it's worth it. Of course, your particular undervolting and overclocking results will vary depending on your silicon quality. By overclocking the 5700 XT, we see the junction temperature hit 110 degrees C, which as far as we're aware is the point where it will start throttling the clock speed and power, and this could be why we could see some instability in the core clock. Honestly, if you're serious about overclocking this card, I'd highly recommend considering an aftermarket heatsink like the Morpheus 2, or possibly a hybrid cooling solution like the Kraken G12 if it fits. In terms of what effect undervolting has on gaming performance, we do get a very small boost here by an improvement of about 2% over stock. Again, we don't really expect an improvement here, so just consider this a bit of a bonus, if that. Overclocking the 5700 XT can accommodate a 7% boost here over stock in Far Cry 5 at 1440p. Again, though, you'll want to consider some more effective cooling or ramping up the fans if that's the profile you want to go with. A quick look at power consumption here, we can see that overclocking the 5700 XT does raise the total system power for our test bench to 314 watts, about 16 watts lower than a stock stock Radeon 7. We do also see a small reduction in power for the undervolted 5700 XT as you would expect. It's nothing too major though since the card compensates the lower voltage for additional power. Now in regards to the blower cooler, remember that the 5700 XT consumes the same amount of power as the RTX 2070 for our next comparison. So yeah, the 5700 XT blower cooler is not going to impress anyone, although it might be better than the old Vega reference coolers. It is still worlds behind what NVIDIA are currently doing with their Founders Edition coolers for their RTX GPUs. So if perhaps you do have an RX 5700 XT, uh, feel free to play around with the voltage and frequency curve and perhaps uh, see what you can get out of it. Leave your comments down below. Just don't expect anything major. These cards do seem acceptable out of the box in terms of cooling and noise performance, but it is definitely something to keep in mind if you are considering an RTX GPU perhaps. It is really up to you what the reduced noise level and thermals are worth. For some that is easily worth the additional $50 or more. So if you are interested in the 5700 or the 5700 XT, you can check them out in the links in the description. As always, guys, a huge thanks for watching, and I will see you all in the next one.